Hello, and welcome to The Monster Painter. This week, we take a look at Mantic's Terrain Crate Battle Damaged House. Okay, so what do we get in Mantic's Terrain Crate, the uh, Battle Damaged House? Well, we don't get a Battle Damaged House for our $29.95 Canadian. What we do get is the contents of a Battle Damaged House, some uh, furniture. Now, I often find the greatest struggle on this channel is getting into the packaging, getting it open, and getting at the goodies inside. And what do we find inside? Well, we get 11 pieces of very interesting and evocative ter tabletop terrain bits. And I'm looking forward to painting them up. Let's take a closer look. So, we get a couple of ruined walls. If this is what's left of the house, it's more than battle damaged. We get a china cabinet in very rough shape, and a barricade made out of a dinette set. There is a very beaten up desk and a set of drawers that look like they were uh, emptied in a rush. And we get a very derelict looking couch and chair ready for the curbside. Finally, we have a broken toilet and sink, and a really beaten up old teddy bear. This is great stuff. All right, time to start painting. Uh, with these manic terrain crates, it's important to understand some of the properties the models have. First, they don't require priming, so there is a whole step we can skip. That being said, uh, it is true the surface of these models does take the paint well, but it doesn't have much of a tooth, so the paint will slide around quite a bit, and you'll need a couple of coats of paint to get a nice even surface. The other very important consideration is these, the surface of these models is hydrophobic, which is to say it does not like water at all. If you try applying a wash without uh, anything else on it, just a, just a wash right onto the model, the wash will beat up and run, and you will get a terrible result. Very disappointing and frustrating. The hydrophobia is so pronounced, I would not so much as mix a drop of water with the initial uh, coats of paint. Yep, you heard me. Put it all on straight out of the tube or you're gonna get frustrated. Now thankfully, once you have a layer of paint built up on these things, you can proceed with normal techniques. Now I'm going to play off the color the models came in by doing a dry brush of bronze yellow to all the wooden parts, and some of these models are almost entirely wood. Overall, I will be using dry brush as the primary technique in this project, saving any washes for the end once a nice paint film has been built up. The next step on most of these models is a light dry brushing of a warm light gray. This will give the pieces an old weathered look befitting beaten up damaged old furniture. Now I'm going to use some iron oxide red to paint up the bricks on these ruined walls. And while I think these walls might have been intended for a World War II or other more modern setting, they are going to be perfect for my favorite game of Frostgrave where you simply can never have enough smashed and ruined remnants of old buildings. Next up, I've pulled out my magnifying lens in order to tackle a bit of the detail. In particular, I will be using a metallic bronze to uh, get at the hardware on all the pieces of wooden furniture. This kind of futzy little bits of detail really are what help make a model pop. Now I'm going to hit the remnants of the plaster on the ruined walls with some unbleached titanium white you know, to make them look like plaster. Next, I will use the same unbleached titanium white to paint up all the shattered and broken crockery in the badly damaged cabinet. And now I will apply a mixture of unbleached titanium white and Payne's Gray to the base of the ruined walls, making them look more ruined and uh, bringing this mass of stuff to near completion. As for the other stuff, the couch and chair, the toilet and sink, and that cute grubby beaten up teddy bear. Well, I worked on all of that stuff off screen, but here the, here's a picture of them with their base coats done. 
And now for the final step on all of the models, a nice wash of ivory black. The models have a good paint film on them now and we don't have to worry about that the hydrophobic properties of the unpainted models. And the black wash will help bring out the details as well as making all this damaged chattel look grubby, which is how damaged chattel should look. And uh, I think they're going to look great. These pieces were intended, I think, for a 20th century war setting, for which they're excellent. And obviously they would be perfect for a zombie apocalypse or any near future dystopia. But I think they could easily fit into the quasi-medieval setting of most fantasy games. I mean, the cabinet and the drawers will work just fine. The couch and chair might require a wink and a nod to pass. The teddy bear could be an objective token in just about any setting. A ruined wall is a ruined wall, and these would only be out of place in the most ancient of historic tabletops. I admit the sink and the toilet have a pretty modern look, but I personally am more than comfortable with a little bit of anachronism, so it's not going to bother me. So I'm going to be using the this whole lot in my favorite gra game of Frostgrave. You see, Frostgrave is a setting in which a high magic wizard city was destroyed, frozen if you will, in a sudden cataclysm. That sudden cataclysm means, unlike real world ruins where anything of value was hauled away long, long ago, all the stuff in that ancient wizard city has remained in situ and suffered, suffered the ravages of time. I feel these models illustrate that quality very well, making them excellent for Frostgrave. Now let's take a look at the final results. And I couldn't be happier with all this stuff. The walls look great with a mixture of textures that really make them pop. They'll be endlessly useful. The chair and the couch are so funky I can almost smell them. Could there be a better place to search for a lost remote control? The drawers and the desk are very evocative of wear and desolation and will be perfect in any setting with an abandonment theme. The cabinet and the barricade further that feeling of abandonment, and I can see their use in all manner of circumstances. And while I think the sink is supposed to stand upright, mine is very tippy, but I like it lying down more anyway. And God help the parent who has to go looking for that lost pink teddy bear. It will only lead to danger and excitement. Yes indeed, I have to say I'm absolutely in love with this versatile set of terrain. Absolutely worth the $29.95 Canadian I paid for it. Absolutely. Next time on The Monster Painter, it's me, Mort. Like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Monster Painter.